Tony Blair said something about, I'm not going to be able to do the quote properly. He said an angry pensioner is more aggressive than a Rottweiler on crack or something like that. Well, as Gordon Brown would know, with the bigoted woman. Yeah, exactly. Was Gillian Duffy a pensioner? I don't know, but everyone had a perm back then, so it looked like... <laughs> they could... It was like 2010! <laughs> yeah, and the, the perm-ridden the perm ridden tens. I thought she was a bit older, but maybe she's not. I don't think this is even about pensioners. I think it's a... Oh, go on. It's about... I'm it's, interested. This is this is going to be a fun devil's advocate. Well, I think cutting winter fuel payment isn't about pensioners. I think it's a it's morality, isn't it? It's a moral argument. Mm. It's who can we, where can we kind of balance the books a little bit? And then mm. the people that they go for are usually the in contrary to actually what you've just said about pensioners having a lot of time to write letters or whatever. It is actually the voiceless. So what you saw throughout austerity were several cuts that were made that directly impacted people who are at the bottom end of the scale, yeah. right? That's where you saw excess deaths. When, during the pandemic, when the Conservatives decided not to renew the £20 universal credit uplift that they'd been giving to people uh, because they decided that they would die if they didn't receive it, <laughs> when they took that away, they did it knowing that it wouldn't... <sighs> I'll pull out one of their famous quotes, it wouldn't discourage business from investing in the United Kingdom. Winter fuel is a safe, a safe policy to go after because it doesn't impede on their political narrative in the way that the Conservatives could go after the poor people because, well, that's what the Conservatives do. Labour can go after the people who don't vote for them because that's what Labour does. But they can't. They have to appease the trade unions. They can leave the pensioners alone. Uh, other way around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand what you're saying. Interesting. Interesting. Um, because Osborne never went after the pensioners, right? Delib deliberate choice. It was and made regressive cuts um to, for example, in work benefits and things of that nature. Triple lock on pensions, you know, the as we've seen in recent history. And so I wonder if to your point about a moral argument, if it almost serves it's like it's like a sacred cow, right? It's 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 um no no, times are changing you have been insulated and protected the entire time, right? The, the, the last 14 years when we've, when we've talked about, um, you know, everyone has to tighten their belts. You haven't had to tighten your belts. And to be, I'm not minimizing, you know, pensioner poverty, which is a real thing. Nonetheless, it is worth considering that more than a quarter of pensioners live in millionaire households. There goes the argument for cutting winter fuel payment, or at least making it means tested or targeted and not a universal that Starmer is signalling by basically saying, here is a sacred cow, here is a knife, I'm plunging it into the heart of the cow. Because for so long, government has treated preferentially the elder generation, and I am signalling to all of you now that time's up. And this is and the, sig the signalling of it is what interests me, because I return again to how infinitesimally small it is as a proportion of public, as a public expenditure. It is not a lot of money. It's... I feel like its its value is in its symbolism and how politically damaging and dangerous uh, going after this can be for him. It's not without risk, and he is a gambler. So, but what you're saying, right, the, lab, the pensioners won't vote for Labour. To an extent, that's true. Their landslide victory was essentially reliant on a number of things, one of which was the Conservative vote not turning out. It was people who traditionally vote Tory staying at home. Um, we had a, a chronically low turnout. I saw IPPR put it at about 52% in the wake of the election. I think more recently, more accurate figures put it at somewhere between like 56 and 59% turnout. So it's historically low. Doing things like this, kicking the boomer beehive, will mobilise those people to go out and vote Tory at the next election because... But they're going to anyway. Well, maybe, maybe not. Who has the ear of the Conservative Party? It's pensioners. It's through the Conservative associations that are in every single town, in every single constituency up and down the land. Who has the ear of the Labour Party? It's the workers. That, that's, that's the crucial distinctive difference between how political organising works 
between those two parties. When you go out and you see people canvassing for the Conservative Party, it is the local Conservative Association. When you go to Labour canvassing events, it is trade union workers. Like, mm. it, this is, it, it's so basic. Obviously, they are going to give the money to the, tra- the people who've just helped to get them elected and not to give it to the people who didn't turn out to vote for them. Mm. <laughs> because the, 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 policy, the policy broadly is totally nonsensical. It is a sacred cow. It's going to raise, it, it's going to save a billion pounds for the Treasury. Actually not true because they're encouraging people to claim pension credit. If everyone who's eligible for pension credit claims it, it wipes out that £1 billion saving. Does it? Yes. <laughs> so it's totally nonsensical. Huh. It's something like, t- the, the questionnaire though is massive, isn't it, for pension credit? It's something like yeah. 250 questions or something you have to fill out. What they're banking on is that there are a lot of old people out there whose family hate them. <laughs> And we'll be like, no, sit in your fridge. Or actually, a sit wild, in your fridge. Sit in your fridge. No, 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 because the house is cold. They can't turn the heating on. Keep up, Ollie. Winter fuel. <laughs> Come on, old Ben. Let's think. So Paul War yesterday was on Westminster Hour. Yeah. And he actually said that this is the fault of the energy companies. So companies like Octopus should reconsider how much they're charging older people for energy. Mm. My brother in Christ... <laughs> Is there going to be one Labour moral left by the end of this Parliament? Probably not. Since when have we gone? Do you know what we should do? Entrust private business to take the right moral standpoint. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> my brother, my brother in Christ, and brother War. <laughs> Let me tell you about a little thing called the profit motive, my friend. <laughs> it's going to blow your mind. They're like. There's some like chief exec going, you know what we could do, fellas? You know mm. what we could do? Lower the prices on this. <laughs> He's not at the next board meeting. Yeah. But if, no, you, but the, the valid point, if you had a regulator that actually went, get, fuck, get fucked, deal with it. You've, you've made X percentage historic profit. I appreciate the wholesale price, prices are high right now. Sorry. No, no. And sort of, Turn the screw. And th- this isn't just uh, off gem, you know, it could be off what, it could be anything. Off what is probably the most um, egregious one because you're looking at water companies like Thames Water that via fin- financialized systems have over leveraged themselves, laden themselves with debt, paid out copious amounts of money to their shareholders, and then are kind of saying, yeah, I'm afraid uh, we're going to have to increase bills by 59%, otherwise we're going to go under. If the regulator had been paying attention before we got to this point said no actually we're not comfortable with you taking these courses of action but instead they just sort of waved it through and so now they're hamstrung 